Good morning. She is waiting because I'm making her food. Hey guys. Don't know how great the lighting is, but I just got up. A few minutes ago. It's about nine. See, I'm drying out some eggshell tear, which is part of what I want to show you. Um, I'm going to show you guys how I make the cat food. Uh, this is the f diet that's been helping my cats since I noticed that they've had um, these seizures or twitches that are usually associated to feline hyperesthesia. Um, so I'm going to show you guys today how I make it. Um, it seems like it would be a lot, but it's actually quite easy. All you have to do is invest in the tools and the supplements. So I would say all together, that's about 200 at the most. And then once you have those things, you're set and you're, you're good to go. Um, you just go to the grocery store and you buy these things. You buy the organ meat and the muscle meat. And it's fairly cheap. Like this is a pound of hearts for 155 and for the recipe that I'm making that should last them for about a week you use only three pounds of meat so that's the hearts right there and this is a uh, that's chicken hearts and this is chicken um, what is this again <laughs> I was like gizzards I believe it's chicken gizzards which is like a, a muscle from the stomach so you want the three pounds of uh, meat it can be muscle meat or you can uh, use the hearts too and the hearts are really good because they have the taurine that are essential to the cats um, so in this video I'm just going to show you guys how to make it um, most likely I will upload a previous one um, with the title um, raw cat food diet Cure for feline hyperesthesia? Question mark. Something like that. But um, I'm just recording this one first. So, and I'll show you. I got my freezer quite stocked after just spending a little while at the grocery store. And this is um, not even what it looked like at first. This is what it looked like after I made um, about two weeks of meals. So, yeah. And this, these are the semi-cooked meals that I made by basically baking the meat for about 15-20 um, minutes and then grinding it and before I use the grinder I would go through the same process but I would just either bake the meat or boil it but I, I boiled it at first and then learned that baking it is even better see this is what it looks like when it's not frozen so I'm actually gonna put that in the fridge to thaw a little bit more and they eat, they eat it, they enjoy it. They, I've noticed they already gained some weight. Um, I would say my cats might have even been a little underweight because they didn't enjoy um, the canned food that much. They would leave a lot of it in there. So, yeah. All right. So, let's see. So this is what I purchased. Um, this is a grinder, and like I said, um, I might post some previous footage of me making it by hand for those who want to make it by hand, because I did um, record some of that. Um, but this is a grinder, and I purchased the grinder because it's easier. I purchased the grinder because um, there are some things you have to make sure the cat gets in their diet, like calcium. And one way of making sure they get the calcium is through bones of the chicken and of rabbit, if you're using rabbit, the soft, small game bones. So um, that's why I purchased the grinder. Some people just chop up the bone and give it to them. Um, it has to be uncooked if you do that because the raw bone could perforate, uh, perforate or poke a hole, you know, in, in the stomach. So you don't want to do that. But just to be safe, um, and my cats, I know them, they're very dainty. I don't see them eating up a raw bone anytime soon unless it's grinded um, to mush. So that's why I purchased the grinder. If you don't um, want to get a grinder and you kind of want to make the food by hand, chop it up into little bits so that your cat can just chew on it. Um, what you can do is this, which is what you see here. Um, this is eggs. And since I've learned that you can use eggshells, I've just been drying out all of mine because it doesn't hurt to have a substitute when you don't have time to grind up the bone. And I'll show you what I did. Um, if you have a coffee grinder, what you do is you wash out the eggshells with warm water and then you dry them on the paper towel. Um, I would just dry them on a plate. It's fine. 
And then if you have a coffee grinder, you grind them up into a fine powder. If not, which I don't have a coffee grinder, um, you put them in a, like a Ziploc bag and you go over them with a rolling pin, like the one you use for pizza making, until it's ground up pretty well. What I do after I do this is I then transfer it into this mortar and pestle and I continue to grind it. And when I'm adding it to the food, I kind of rub it between my fingers. So that's what's actually in the food that I have in the freezer right now. And if you look at it, you see it's very small. So, and you would add about uh, a teaspoon of the eggshell to the pound, a pound of meat that you have. And the eggshell basically is made out of the same material that bone is made from. And um, the little inner skin that's usually in the eggshell would work the same like collagen would work. So it would give them those same um, joint support uh, nutrition. So yeah. Okay, so a scale is also good to have because it is going to help you get exact measurements now if you can just kind of go by what the um what it says on the package here but i when it comes to the, when you need things like a quarter ounce of this or that it's good to have the scale and this scale was only uh, about 12 dollars on amazon so that's pretty cheap um this grinder i paid about uh 150 for it and got a five um percent five dollar discount i bought it from the one stop jerky shop apparently this is the um uh online is online store and apparently this is the grinder that um everyone praises and uses and they uh keep it for years and it's fine um if you have any repair needs the company will repair it um also um it says on the website it's <clears throat> it's perfect for the raw food diet and it's made to be used at home so you don't have to worry about having something like industrial size in your house so uh, worth the investment if you want to do the grinder, but there are plenty of uh, videos on YouTube where people don't use the grinder There's the first one of the first videos I watched the man literally was just Chopping everything up into little cubes for his cats and he was throwing the raw balls at them to eat separately But I, I personally wouldn't do that, but he was chopping everything up into little cubes for a cat um, and then put it in these uh, uh, Airtight bags and that was pretty much the gist of it. So if you have the right ingredients, you can do that um, If you want to do that, there's another video with a woman who puts everything into these um, Little containers she puts like, you know a piece of um, Meat she puts like a piece of shrimp. She just uh, sprinkles some eggshells on top She makes sure she puts a couple of hearts in there and lets the cat eat it raw like that So, you know, it's really your preference your choice. Just make sure you're getting the right um and, and the right ingredients in there for the cat can, can have a nice balanced uh, diet. And when you do this, you're gonna ha you you will have less um, vet bills and things like that to worry about because my cats were twitching and having little um, cramps and things like that. And I looked it up and I found that it's related to diet. A lot of toxins that's in the wet and the dry food because they use carbs and grains. So I decided to switch them over to a um, halfway home cook, a, a home cook diet. And now I'm working on the home raw diet. So what you see here, the raw food is actually going to be my first batch of me making raw. And I'm going to incorporate that into the cooked food that I already have for them. So we're going to give them a ratio of uh, 25% raw, 75% cooked for a few days. So you have to take that and then you increase it to 50. And then um, you can go slower if you want, but the next can be all raw. So, okay, so I've weighed this. And now I'm going to rinse it off. I figure this might be a little tricky because I don't want to get full out of my phone, but... I'm sure you can soften the meat. These are the chicken hearts. And hearts are very important to have because cats cannot create taurine. They get taurine from the meat um, that they eat and without foaming they die. So the basics for this diet, um, which you'll see in that other video that I mentioned, is to have, think of how the cat would eat the animal whole, and you want to make sure to include those components. And then you also include some supplements for something that you're just not going to find in the grocery store. Um, 
the hearts are pretty easy. If you don't have the chicken or rabbit, then you can probably substitute the beef, but I'd say you want to kind of stick in what they would naturally find and hunt. Um, okay, so this is the two pounds of meat I already have here. So I'm going to actually go and grind this up first. The heart's ready to go here. Um, I actually think I might have a few more to dig out of this thing. You want to make sure you get yourself some bleach afterwards for cleanup. Okay, turning this on. Quick, uh, quite simple. Now you want to make sure the meat is cold, not frozen, because it's just better for it to keep its form. Okay, so that's the heart and that was quite simple. Now do you see why I bought the grinder instead of chopping all that up by hand? Yeah, it's really easy. Okay, so now I'm going to do the gizzards. I'm trying to figure out if I should do a fine screen or if I should switch it to a coarse screen. But I think I'll keep with the fine screen for now. Um, actually, let me consult the manual. <laughs> There's the medium one. And the small, and then you have the larger texture. And I actually go into this compartment uh, over here. I'm just going to take out the larger textured one. Um, so the grinding plate, I just looked over the manual again. Um, they're just going to determine the size and the texture of the meat. You don't want to use the, the, the very, very uh, small one until you, unless you're going through grinding a second time. So I think for these gizzards, I'll use the medium because they do have hard parts in them. So I want them ground up fairly well. So now part of this rest, part of a cat's good diet is them chewing. Um, it helps the teeth when you're grinding, you're taking away that. So what some people do is they cube some meat additional meat to add to the mixture that the cats can chew. Um, what I saw someone doing here was basically to change the plate to that size. So that only bits that they can chew. I'm going to try and see which one I think works best. I'm still perfecting um, my technique when it comes to this. Just experiment and see what works. Okay, so...
Okay, so that actually took a little bit longer to come out because um, it was a little harder. Had this really hard muscle in it. So this is about the two pounds. And we're gonna include a third pound of meat, which I have chosen to be um, these chicken wings. And this says here that it's a full pound. So, and I chose the chicken wings because they have, have bones in it. The chicken bones are fine to ground up. Um, and I also have these livers, which I'll get to later, but the chicken bones are, are fine to ground up. I think I'm just going to make little snacks with this. That's ground chicken meat. Um, and this is the turkey that I made cube. I'm, I might cube it and bake it a little because turkey is a little bit harder to chew. Um, we'll see. <laughs> so the machine, the the instructions tell you do not grind turkey bones in the machine. Chicken bones are fine. Rabbit bones are fine because they're softer. The turkey bones, the consistency is too hard. If you're feeding your cat lamb or beef, then you can. Um, from that, infer that you don't want to grind any lamb or beef bones. So, look, she's like, oh, yay. The funny part is that they usually come running when it's raw. When I'm cooking it, they're interested, but they're not as interested. <laughs> Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is rinse this off and weigh it. If you're grinding the bone, you don't want to put the bone in separate. You want to grind the bone with the meat. Make it easier for the machine to do it. So that's what it's called. And this is a new uh, Purdue, all vegetarian fed, no animal byproducts, cage free, and hormone free. Can't see that on the package because I just ripped it. But it's a new brand they're coming out with. Harvest Land? Not sure if that's the name, but there's another one called Harvest Land that's pretty good. <sighs> and priced pretty well. Okay. It's a pretty cool. Um, this is quite easy to use. If you want to minus the weight of the container, you just put on the container before you turn the machine on, and it automatically subtracts the weight. <sighs> Excuse my yawning. Haven't had my tea. Look. Ooh, somebody's interested. <laughs> She's like, did I smell chicken? <laughs> Oh, it's already out of pound. Look at that. Oh. Kind of. Yeah, it's already out of pound. This is pound 83. Hmm. Well, that much off from um okay I'll decide what I want to do with that if I want to add it or save it for their food later the only problem is that it's, it's already um thawed so you want to be careful because you want to freeze it for about three days three to seven days these have hit the seven day mark in the freezer to kill any parasites and uh kill bacteria and things like that but um, so 
So in that case, I'm just going to use it because it's not like I can refreeze it and I'm not going to eat this. So. Okay, so that's wage. I'm going to put this in the bowl over here and get the livers. Okay, so I've actually decided to bag it and refreeze it because I did some research. Because I don't want to, this is like wasted money if you're overfeeding them, right? So, um, what I might do next time to go, not go through all the hassle is just to bag it in, in baggies according to weight before I freeze them. But uh, according to the FDA, as long as you thaw the meat out in the refrigerator, which I did, it's safe to refreeze it. Um, it's safe to refreeze it. So that's going to control any bacteria and all that stuff. All right. So this is recipe also calls for outside of the muscle meat, which is not all muscle meat. I use also organ meat. Um, but separately aside, you want the organ um it calls for the liver, which is also very important for the cats to have. So it calls for a mm, quarter pound. So I'm going to measure that out on the scale. That's four ounces. Your scale reads in ounces. 16 ounces being a pound. Now this is why I need the scale. I'm sure I was overfeeding the liver. I'm at five. So I'm going to leave that there. And just refreeze the rest of this. What you can do is leave the liver to be chopped up, but I don't think that's enough to make any difference in your teeth, so. All right, so I have this in the liver ready. I need some more mixing room in my life. Quart pound. very soft almost like soup all right which is why I said you could just chop it but I don't think it would have got because it was such a small amount I don't think it would have got dispersed evenly enough so I'm grinding it I guess I grind it okay so I'm actually going to mix this up a little bit just to make sure I get the liver in there good Oh, I had a little trouble unscrewing the nut part, this part, the last part. And I told you don't screw it too tight, which I don't think I did. I just think through the process, somehow it just gets really tight on there. But um, what I had to do was take this whole uh, piece off, attachment here, and hit it with some hot water. And I was able to get the this part off. And I think I have to do, had to do that twice. So that's just a tip. 
because I'm a girl, a guy might have some more arm strength to pull it, to take it off, but I couldn't screw it off um, without adding the hot water to loosen it, which is fine because we're about to change this uh, grate. tell you not to leave the grinder just running on its own so I like to place the meat in the grinder <laughs> patient waiting <laughs> you missed it because our hands were covered in orky meat I couldn't film it but she was meowing Oi. That actually did leave me with a couple of chopped bits at the end of the machine still inside there. All right, so. Hi. Hi. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I forgot what I did was unplugged it while I cleaned it because I like to be very careful. chicken rings bone and all with this uh, rest of the meat here so this is uh, the three pounds plus the quarter pound of liver so now what we're going to create is the um, liquid for the meal the supplements Whee. my battery's low my computer as you see, I've done my own research here, making cat food. I will include some of these links. Um, and the video explaining all this. <sighs> Let me plug this in. Here we go. All right. Okay, so I've been um, perfecting this recipe, looking at different ones, and I've decided I'm going to use one that goes for four pounds of meat. Um, so here's the turkey. I do not recommend turkey. Um, it was very hard. Look how much is left in there, because I couldn't get it off. It's too tough. And unfortunately, you can't put it through this grinder. So 
Unless you have one that you can grind the turkey bones in, I would not recommend turkey. So, I'm just gonna grind up what I pull off the turkey and a bit more of the, the rest of the chicken wings and that'll make a fourth pound. Do the rest of the wings. <sighs> Once I have this recipe figured out well, this will be much faster. Because I've read some that say you can just use, they won't call for four pounds of muscle meat and then you add the organs separately in quarter pound amount. But then they also use all these supplements. Um, from what I've also read that you can add as much organ meat as you do the muscle meat also, um, but just subtract, add it in, in addition to the pounds. So if you're going to do four pounds and use the pounds of hearts, then it's going to be, um, you know, two pounds of meat and it's not like an additional supplement. So yeah, which I tend to go towards that way because the organ meat is very important for the cat. So why not? Hey guys, so in here you have four egg yolks with the egg whites removed and two cups of water. Uh, this is for the uh, four pound meat recipe. Um, these are the egg whites on the side. I was going to have them for breakfast, but there's way too many. There's four. So I think what I'm going to do instead is um, they can have the egg whites if they've been cooked a little. So I'm going to cook them some. Otherwise, the egg whites are said to draw nutrients out of the other supplements. So I'm going to cook them and then add them to the um, mix since uh, I don't want to waste any food. Um, so what you want to add in here, and I'm not going to include measurements because you can easily go like online and look for measurements. I may do an updated video when I have like the perfect recipe um, for my cats. But um, what you're going to add here is uh, vitamin E. And you're going to open the capsule in the dry form, powdered form. Open the capsule and put it in there. You're going to add salmon oil. Um, gland, uh, glandular supplement, which is actually the glands of the animal. And this is, um, taken from animals. And this is what I was talking about when I said there's some things you can't find in the grocery store. Because if you think about it, they would be eating the gland whole, right? Okay. Um, vitamin B50 complex. Taurine. Taurine's already in the hearts, but it doesn't hurt to have any extra because, like I said, um, the cats can die if they don't get their taurine. Um, and salt. Some people use light salt. Um, I use a natural salt because it already has all the natural minerals in it, and that's a sea salt. So I'm going to add that to this um, mixture, mix it up, and then add it to the meat. Set you guys up here and get this on camera. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try. I need something more sturdy than that. You what, you guys? Can you see the bowl at all? Kinda, yeah. All right, I think that'll work. So, so uh, for the four out four pounds of meat, I'm going to use four of these Amoplex glandular capsule. 
which are freeze-dried glands, pretty much. You want to have a, a container that you can discard the capsules in. I'll use this. I'll make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Hopefully you guys can see this. Okay. Patiently waiting. Last time I did this, I dropped it in the mix. So I want to make sure not to get messy this time. You can use a clean needle or now to um, kind of help you get it all out there a little bit quicker. was so funny. Um, cotton, which is the calico you see. I have a calico and a tortie. She came over and she was like jumping on my leg, hugging on my leg. It was really funny. That was when she smelled the raw chicken. So actually, because I already have a batch made, this is a thing. I'm making double the amount that I would usually make because I'm going to transition them over so I didn't want to wait until, you know, later to make a batch of raw. I figured, you know what, I just made a batch of semi, halfway cooked food um, that I should make a batch of raw now and transition them. Why keep waiting? Um, four capsules of the vitamin B complex. It's supposed to be about 200 milligrams, according to this. Okay. And all these vitamins, I got them online on Amazon. Ooh, Amazon's great. So, if you're going to get them online, I would recommend. that you restock when your bottles are like half full. Don't wait too long. I would say all together eh, for the vitamins maybe $70? Not sure. I also bought the scale at the same time. When you think about how much you spend on that <coughs> dry and wet cat food, I mean, kind of evens out. And even if you do spend a little bit more, not a significant amount, you're saving in the long run because, um, you're not going to have as many vet bills. Like I told you, you know, a lot of these diseases, uh, this is the vitamin E, you're going to want um, 800 IU. These are 400, so that's two. Um, a lot of these diseases, they just pop up all of a sudden like, oh, my cat's sick. It's because of the friggin' diet that we feed them. Excuse my French. Um, but that's why. Like all of a sudden, my four-year-old cat is like, having these weird back spasms and seizures and I'll tell you how insane it was like now I've like I barely see her do it and when it does do it, if she does do it it doesn't bother her it's like she doesn't really react to it and maybe in the past couple of weeks since I've been feeding her this I might have seen her do it once or twice versus me seeing her do it every few hours or every hour 
um, a, every, a couple of episodes within the hour. It was that bad. Um, and now she's acting pretty normal. Like I'm not even worried anymore because I knew it was the uh, the diet, and now it's like basically she's detoxing. And what I was doing was putting a little bit of um, apple cider or organic apple cider vinegar in her water as well to help her detox. They also sell these um, uh, tinctures that detox cats. Okay, so we're going to save the salmon oil for last because it's messy. Um, the taurine, we're going to add uh, how much of that? Well, this one doesn't tell you how much taurine. This is what I'm saying when I'm finding the, the like the perfect recipe. This one doesn't tell me how much taurine to add. I already have so many hearts in there, so there's taurine in there, but I want to make sure. 2,000 milligrams. So, about 2,000. That's one fourth of a teaspoon. That's a thousand. So, this is a nice powder form. You can just measure it out. There we go with the taurine. All right. And salt, I believe it's about a tablespoon. Four and a half. Four point five. This one says one teaspoon, that one says 1.5. I read one that says a tablespoon per pound of meat, which is fucking insane. Um, we're gonna go with one. <laughs> one Pepsi one. Oh yeah, I need some flavor. Okay, now. Put that together. That wasn't hard. Quite easy, actually. And salmon oil. How much salmon oil? Um, oh. This one says 4,000 milligrams. Okay, so this is a thousand. So that's four capsules of salmon oil. Four. Okay, so you want to get them in the capsules, and this is a good brand, Carlson. It has EPA, DHA, um, Norwegian and it says it here we go uh, FDA laboratory has been determined to be fresh really potent and free of detrimental levels of mercury cadmium lead PCBs and 28 other contaminants I don't know how much you want to touch the FDA but the fact that it says here that it's you know it's too it's a too an amount where it passes inspection is good um, one gram of fish oil is extracted from salmon and other fish found in deep pristine waters. Okay, so how you gonna get the oil out the capsule is quite simple. Get yourself a needle, or in my case, I'm gonna use it now. Hold it up like this because otherwise it's gonna get messy. And I'm gonna twist it, twist, 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 twist. Making sure not to squeeze the capsule. Like I said, I did this before and it was pretty messy. There we go. And I've just pasted it and now I'm just gonna squeeze it into the mix. It smells very much like salmon. Cat's gonna love it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so what I noticed is that, so when I first started with a cooked homemade diet, I um, first gave it to the mall cooks and they were kind of like apprehensive about it. You know, because cats have to get used to something. So I said, okay, well, I don't want to, but because I know that this canned food is resulting in their sickness. So let me um, introduce the cook slowly with the canned food. And it's, I hadn't given her anything to eat that day because I didn't want, I wanted to wait to get all the ingredients and cook the food. So she wasn't really spasming. Um, a lot. Soon as I give her the canned food, even though it was mixed with a cook, she had an episode and she started spasming. And I was just like, okay, that's it. Because you, you see, it was like a direct correlation. So I said, okay, that's it. And I just left the cooked food there so they ate it. Surprisingly, once they got used to the idea, it was all gone. So this is it. We have the mixed liquid and the last thing to do is to add the mixed liquid um, into the meat and that's it. I may cook the egg whites and add that as well. But that's pretty simple. You don't need instructions on that. Um, so yeah, you just add it to the meat and you mix well. And you want to get some plastic containers or glass containers or Ziploc bags, whatever your preference is. And you're going to dole this out in portions. So. The usual rule recommended amount is about a half cup serving. A half cup is a serving. So you're going to feed them two times out the day. Then you're going to give them a half cup in the, in the day and then a half cup at night. Um, my cats eat a little bit less, but I've seen that they are actually gaining weight since eating this. Because like I said, they, they would kind of lick the juice out of the canned food. But you never really see them eat the canned food. And as a whole so they were probably underweight um, but they've been gaining weight since they've been eating this so but right now I'm giving them one third when I see that they are fine with that I will switch it over to a half cup on the day and in the night instead of one third but okay so Gonna just mix it really well. Mix it really well. This is the finished product. So I'm gonna get a Ziploc bag and dole it out. Use a measuring cup and put. Since I have two cats, I'll put two. I'll put a full cup in each bag, and they will get a half cup each, serving wise. So yeah, that's how you make raw food. It's that simple. And look how much food this is. This is going to last you for quite a bit. Week, maybe two weeks. I have to dole it out and see, but I'm just eyeballing it. Okay. So that's it. Very easy, simple. You can take the time out. Cats love it. They'll love you for it. They, they'll be healthier. It's great. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Where's the food? <laughs> believe they talk in British accent, don't they? <laughs> um, this is the half cooked food that I'm going to mix with it. Just came back to show you guys. I'm putting it in a warm bath to get it nice and warm. Sometimes pressing the bag helps that go along a bit faster. And I'll get their the bowls. ready and then mix 25% of this 
to 75% of that. I'm just going to eyeball it. <laughs> so this is how I know it's ready when it's soaking in the bath. The blood and the juices start to come out. So you can do the same thing with the raw food. Put it in a warm bath because the cats prefer a uh, meat that is like a body temperature. Now I'm just going to measure it out um, with a tablespoon per. So it doesn't have to be an exact science because you know, you know already you can measure it when you put it in the bag. So I'll just take it and scoop into each bowl. That's her sister. She always waits to eat after her, after her sister. <laughs> Patiently waiting. She must clean herself before her meal. But, um, Hi. the last scoop I put in was the wet food, was the, um, the raw food. And then I just mixed it all up together. So let's say I had three scoops of the half cooked food in each meal. The last scoop was the, the wet food, so that's about 25% I'd say. The next time I'd have two scoops of the raw. I mean, three scoops of the half cooked and then the last scoop was the raw food. And let's say um, two days of this and then the next day I'll have two scoops of the cooked and then two of the raw. You could do that for as long as I think necessary. I might do it until I finish the cooked food out. That's about how much cooked I have left. So it can be a nice slow transition. And the reason you want to transition them slowly is because they kind of have to get accustomed to it in their digestive system. Um, you want to make sure they don't have any problems with uh, loose stool or constipation. You want to monitor their pubes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. I'm really proud. I'm really happy for them. I can tell that her coat is so much softer. They all seem more alive. It's really good for them. So, I hope this video was helpful. Um, uh, and you can... Uh, Send me in the chats if you have any questions. Blessed be everyone.